nothing lasts forever. It's a phrase that has been spoken since the dawn of man, and will most likely be spoken when the stars fade away into a cold and meaningless obscurity. But, what if things could last forever? What if our days of light could last an eternity? What if the stars never darkened, and the empires we built never crumbled? What if forever was within our grasp? We all want good things to remain, to never change, to be still and captured like an image or memory, forever perfect, forever ours to love. Dark Souls is a story about forever, and about what happens after. In the age of ancients the world was unformed, shrouded by fog, a land of grey crags, arch trees, and everlasting dragons. But then there was fire. And with fire came disparity, heat and cold, life and death, and of course, light and dark. When the first flame appeared, the world was thrust into an age of fire. The endless night was brought to an end. With the flames came Nito, the Lord of the Dead, Gwyn, the Lord of Sunlight, and the Witches of Isolith, who took control of the flames. In the shadows of creation itself, humanity crawled out of the ashes. Humanity, fickle, fragile, like an ember in the wind. Yet, in these treacherous and uncertain times, humanity found its footing in the Age of Existence. Gwyn, the Lord of Sunlight, declared war against the Everlasting Dragon. Like one single flame being enough to cast away the darkness, so was one ray of sunlight breaking through the clouds enough to transform the misty grey world and turn it into a world capable of life. From the nothingness creation came, and against the endless fog creation fought defiantly, determined to make its mark on the world. The Witches of Isleth weaved firestorms. Gwyn lit up the grey sky with his strikes and death took the first of the everlasting dragons. And just like that, the Age of Ancients had ended. The Age of Fire was born, and the world came to be. It's a story like any other, telling the tale of a time before time. Dark Souls tells the tale of fire, and what came after. Fire in Dark Souls is not at all too dissimilar from our own, both in its effects and its consequences. The flames provided life, shelter and control. It enabled us to make tools to take light to the depths of the earth and to evolve as a species beyond what nature has given us. Gone was the night and the unchanging history. Instead there was light, a future brimming with hope. The moment fire appeared, humanity's fable finally began. This is where most stories would be content to end, but not Dark Souls. Dark Souls instead lingers around the fire and sits down. This is where other stories would move on to the next chapter, move past the Age of Fire and find out what comes after. Looking for either the next adventure, or a silent grave to perish peacefully. The world of Dark Souls doesn't move forward like this, doesn't turn the page, begin a new chapter, or bring its own story to a graceful end. Instead it lingers in the past, and clings to what it is or was, and tries to keep it that way forever. After the defeat of the Everlasting Dragons, life began to spread across the world, free to flourish. Civilization evolved under the guidance of the new Dragon Slayers. Using the fire that fueled them, humanity built castles that reached the sky, and kingdoms that covered the earth. Secrets of the mystical arts were explored, and craftsmanship evolved. The future was bright for mankind. Truly it was a time to be alive. At the spill of the world on a desolate mountaintop, those who came for the first flame established their own kingdom, Lordran. Gwyn, the Lord of Sunlight, was now closer to the sun than ever before. 
Right there he built a city that basked in sunlight and reached out to it with tall spires and archways. The mighty Anor Londo, the city of light and the gods, as close to the heavens as gods should be, because that's what they were, gods. Meanwhile, the witches of Isolith burrow down deep into the ground, taking their people and kingdom back to the roots of all creation. Using the art of pyromancy to light their own age of greatness to rival the kingdom of the gods in the sky. Where the gods harvested sunlight up in the heavens, deep below the witches of Isolith studied the nature of the fire. Learning of the fire where they came from, and how its fate is ever so intrinsically intertwined with that of the world. For the time being, everything is alright. The fire is still burning, the world is still turning. Humanity keeps expanding and growing. The cities get bigger and the countless kings, sages and knights come and go under the watchful eyes of the gods. Years pass. Time moves forward relentlessly. But the future is as bright as it was promised. It's as if the sun never goes down and the days of glory are endless. And for Anno Londo, Lord Gwyn can see the world still flourishing under his watchful gaze. But something is amiss. It's hard to see. And at first he even refuses to see it. But what he is seeing is undeniable. The fire from which everything started is dying. The first flame is flickering. The signs are subtle. The embers don't shine as bright as they used to. The flames don't reach as high. And the heat dissipates a little. But once Gwyn touches it, he can feel it with his soul. The days of the first flame are numbered. And as the fire is fading, the darkness it held off for such a long time begins to rise once more. Slowly, the world begins to unravel as it heads for its natural end. The quiet whispers become a storm, and unrest grows. The beginning of the end was upon the world, and the gods could do nothing but watch warily as the sky slowly turns dark, and life creeps to a halt. The Age of Fire is ending. What comes next is the fearful unknown. An age of darkness is upon the world. A desperate attempt was made by Isolith to create a second flame to replace the dying fire. But instead of creating new life, the new flame she created ran wild and backfired in the worst way possible. Consuming herself, her own children, and transforming them into monstrosities and unleashing hellish creatures upon the world. Knights from Anorlondo were sent to the city to control the damage of the witch's doing, but when they arrived there was nothing left to be saved. The once proud city of Isolith was lost. The civilians had been scorched away by the fire, and those that survived were forced to bear the marks of their mother's mistake. You'd think one would learn not to go against this course of nature, but Gwyn was nothing but determined. Determined not to let his light fade. Determined to keep the Age of Fire going. Determined to find a solution. And after searching, he found one. A way to keep the flame burning a little longer. To fight off the darkness for a few more centuries. And for his world to stay as it was. A way to rekindle the bonfire, no matter how unnatural it was. Offering his own soul to the fire, Gwyn managed to rekindle the flames. Using his very own essence as fuel, he gave his everything to the fire, leaving nothing but a husk of himself behind. But his sacrifice wasn't lost. As Gwyn once hoped, the kindling did indeed reignite the spark and keep the world turning for a bit longer. And for the first centuries, it did. But the world of Dark Souls was not meant to last. And although Gwyn had managed to reignite the flames, they began to cast a dark shadow on the world. And as time continued on, these shadows only began to grow darker. 
death was the first victim of the everlasting Age of Fire. After an unknown amount of time, a new curse started to plague humans. The Hollowing. A curse that caused people to become undead. Unable to die, but not quite human either, but instead caught in a state between these two forever. A cruel side effect from Gwyn's desire to extend the Age of Fire. As long as there was fire, no matter how insignificant, humanity would be tied to it, come back and go through the same hell. But even in this purgatorial state, there was still something that could rot. And when even the bodies could no longer rot, their minds did. Left without purpose, wandering undead soon became hollow and lost their mind, going insane and attacking those they once were. The undead plague spread from Laudron to all corners of the earth, carrying not only their own rampant insanity, but another disease as well. The disease known as despair. And although not immediately, slowly, kingdom after kingdom started to collapse in on itself, as humanity lost all hope. The gods of Anor Londo saw what happened and fled Laudron, abandoning the already collapsing kingdom and leaving their own legacies far behind. The sky above Anor Londo turned dark as citizens and gods fled the city. Only Gwyndolin, Gwyn's second son, stayed behind to hold up the sun in Anor Londo. Only this time the sun was a mere illusion, a desperate attempt to cling on to the glory the empty city once held. The world truly started to rot. Wounds opened up by time and started to decay. From the primordial darkness came the abyss that spread its tendrils through the minds of people and civilization, corrupting the minds of those that ruled the land with dark promises and plunging it into the abyss. Yet the Age of Fire was still going as time kept moving forward. With the end of death, the world itself became something of a festering corpse. Abandoned by the gods, Laudron spirals out of control. The lower cities surrounding Anor Londo become undead settlements. Deeply below it are the depths, where a waste of everything from above is being dumped. Going even deeper, we find Blight Town. A poison infested swamp at the bottom of the world where everything from the surface falls down to rot. This is the world now. Perfectly resembled by the curse that plagues humanity. Hollow. Without purpose. Unable to move on and slowly going insane. The Age of Fire will last forever now. Every time the flames begin to fade, a hero is chosen to feed itself to the flames. A plot created by Gwyn to ensure that even after his own death, the fire would be kept fed. And thus a never-ending cycle follows. The fire is fading. A hero is chosen. The hero feeds the flame. The flame starts to fade. Over and over. A never-ending spiral of life and death. Forever and even after that. That is what will happen forever. The poison of Blight Town keeps festering. The bells of Undead Parish keep ringing. And the ghost of New Londo keeps haunting. The fire keeps going. All because one man was afraid of the dark. Afraid of what happens after. Afraid to turn the page and to let go. Dark Souls tells the story of what eternity looks like. Of people clinging to what once was once held dear. Until it becomes tarnished and broken. But even Dark Souls knows forever cannot last. And even eternity once finds its end. There is one legend of a new undead that will be chosen. But instead of kindling the flame, they will abandon it, allowing it to fade away and for the quiet darkness to take its place. Around the world, darkness falls. But instead of a horrible monster, it comes like an old friend. A soft blanket for a final rest. 
so the world could awaken or perish in peace. And so the sun falls below the horizon. After forever, the ghosts in New Londo can finally move past the tragedy. The bones in the catacombs will no longer rise, and the golems of the crystal cave break down once their master is no more. In Undead Berg, Parish and Anno Londo, the sun falls, and after forever the starless sky is beautiful once again. After forever, lost Isolith will never be found again. The scattered family reunites one more time for an eternal sleep. After forever in the dark root gardens, the great grey wolf Sif joins her master as there is no one left to disturb his grave. Whatever the reigns of the abyss is no longer a concern. And as the hollowed husk of a once great lord is slain, the fire at Firelink fades. The dark falls completely, and all light fades. After forever, everything finally ends.